The last step in the schedule update process is developing the schedule update narrative. The narrative is a key component to the schedule update. The reason being is that it helps us to explain any issues that came up in the latest schedule update and any changes that we made to the schedule. The first paragraph details out the original NTP and the original contract completion date, and it also lets the customer know where we are with the current schedule update, if we're behind or if we're ahead, and the actual completion date. And then we can also take this time to explain any key areas that are causing delays to the client. We also want to describe the critical path, especially if it's been revised from the original baseline, what is now driving the schedule, since those are the most demanding and important activities. We will also go through and describe the reports that we're generating for them so they know what reports they're going to be getting. The next line is the description of the current and anticipated problem areas, you know, where we see issues, what might cause a delay in the future, and things like that. Explanation of corrective actions taken. So the next couple lines will be descriptions of any kind of actions we took to change or modify the schedule. It's very important that we document this so that the client knows and that it's on record so that they can either refute things, no, we don't want you to change that, or in the future if you need to do a TIA, you have all the, do all the changes that you made documented. So we go through and we list out any activity name changes we made, activities removed from the schedule, and activities added to the schedule, and the justi justification for those additions or removals. We want to document any changes in early and late start dates. We can typically refer to the overall slack reduction or increase and the general critical path activities. We want to document any changes to activity durations that we made, uh, changes in the critical path, the total float or slack time, changes in contract time if there was contract extension that was given, changes in logic. This is important if we need to correct uh, the schedule for out-of-sequence activities, such as if activity B had a predecessor of activity A as a finish-to-start relationship, but activity A is not yet complete, but activity B has begun. So we need to change the logic to reflect what's going on in actuality, and maybe change the predecessor relationship to a start-start. If we do something like that, we need to document it in the narrative so the client is aware of the changes we've made. Any additional features of work that we needed to add or any other miscellaneous changes. Lastly, we want to go over any unresolved issues um, such as unanswered RFIs, rejected submittals, pending mods, things like that. Again, this narrative is just a really good opportunity to explain the issues in the current schedule, to kind of put the client on notice on future issues, um, things that are driving the schedule that they may be responsible for, and then any changes we had to make to the schedule that deviate from the baseline. So again, this narrative is a real important tool, um, especially when going after additional time later on in the schedule. This narrative will be referred to, um, especially if there are any changes made to the baseline schedule. So now we have the three main components for a schedule update. It's inputting the actual data into the, the schedule program and updating the schedule. Then generating the reports, the comparison report, continuous flow, the banded schedule, the cash flow, and then the critical path as well. And then developing the schedule update narrative. All three of those components are very important and need to be submitted to the client with every schedule update so that they are fully aware of the changes we've made and then the issues that are upcoming in the schedule.